Hello, this is Conor Manuel, and uh, in our lesson about marketing and self-promotion, uh, I want to talk to you about Laura Tronke, um, one of our past students. And the reason I want to talk about Laura is that she was actually quite successful in promoting herself. One of the first things she did was change her name to Laura Wood. That was her pseudonym as an artist, illustrator. And when you type in Laura Wood in Google, uh, obviously there's lots of women with the same name. So she had to actually always add the name Laura Wood Illustrator or Laura Wood Artist. Otherwise, you wouldn't find her. But that's her there. That's what she looks like. And this is what she looked like when she was uh, enrolled in the course back in 2012, I think it was. Uh, we did a feature on her. Um, Laura was quite an ambitious student. Even before she graduated, she was already developing a marketing plan. In fact, this is a sample of her marketing plan, and it shows you that in 2012, she had all these goals in her first year, and then she also set out these five-year goals, and I'm actually happy to report that uh, she's achieved all the goals up to 2017, and she's well and truly on her way to achieving her goals for 2022. So that's a really good um, model for people to keep in mind that you can develop a first-year, five-year, and 10-year plan. Now, in terms of her brand identity, one of the first things that Laura did was uh, develop a logo for her name, Laura Wood. And these are some of the concepts that she was uh, using at the time. She's actually ended up sticking to this one. This is the one that she uses now. And uh, the pencil indicates that she uses mostly graphite to create her artwork, and then she adds digital color. So let's have a look at some of her student work. So this is an example of um, her children's book illustration. This is a student portfolio, don't forget. And you can see that the underlining of the image is graphite pencil, and then she's just uh, brought it into Photoshop and added digital color. And I could, honest, I could say that she's already developed a style. Uh, so she has a distinct style, and she was already working towards developing a style before she graduated. The other thing that Laura did was she wrote a statement about herself. Um, this is written, obviously, in the first person. We recommend that you write your statement in the third person, but you can alternate. So even before she graduated, she had a pretty good statement uh, or biography, if you like, um, that explained to people who she was and what she was doing. Now, in terms of self-promotion, um, Laura set up a website. She developed, I can't remember what she used, uh, might be WordPress, I can't remember quite honestly, but uh, she developed this website and, um, and then she also developed a blog and the blog was something that uh, she would update maybe once a week, twice a week and that's the whole purpose of a blog, no sense having a blog that sits dormant. So she had the website, she had the blog, blog sorry. <laughs> Um, then she had a Facebook page, social media, and you can see there's a distinct sort of consistent look with uh, which each of those platforms. Of course, she joined Instagram. She had to change her name for Instagram uh, to Laura, L-O-R-A underscore Wood because someone had already taken Laura Wood. So it's the quick uh, or the dead in, uh, in terms of Instagram. Right, uh, LinkedIn is another popular uh, professional site that you can join. Um, again, it lets you uh, share your portfolio with other creatives and other professionals. And she also joined Behance, which is another platform for, again, profiling and sharing your portfolio with uh, a community of artists and uh, interested people. Now, there are certain blogs that Laura joined. Uh, one was called Illustrator Friday. Um, and there was also quite a lot of publicity that she was aiming for. So let's look at the publicity. Um, what Laura did tell me was that she would actually contact these places like Pigeonhole Books and introduce herself, hoping that they would uh, be interested in interviewing her. You know, she got quite a few knockbacks, but more often than not, people did respond. Uh, Lost at E Minor was another site that she contacted and uh, sure enough, they were able to interview her. You can see by the date there, 2013, that she did actually um, achieve this in her first year beyond graduating. 
And so these are just some of the places that Laura contacted uh, to introduce herself. And they were very good to um, contact her and conduct an interview. Now, she also recommends joining an agency. So the obvious one in Australia is Illustrators Australia, IA. So she paid, I think, $97 student membership to join. And they also um, did a profile page for her. And then Good Illustration is another wonderful site if you're thinking about children's book illustration. Um, it's kind of like a, um, a platform for illustrators, uh, a peak body, if you like, online. And then the one that she's with now is childrensillustrators.com. This is a worldwide one. And she's actually achieved quite a few commissions from this uh, particular site, just being a member. So if you're interested in uh, joining any of these uh, sites, just find out what the uh, membership costs. And um, you've got to be ready to commit. You've got to be ready to produce the work. So don't join until you're ready to actually start operating as a professional artist, illustrator. Now, in terms of selling her work, uh, Redbubble was uh, a place that she had uh, uploaded some high-quality images. And the good thing about Laura's artwork is it's actually, yes, it's children's book illustration, but it's suitable as individual prints. So she also joined Society6, which is similar to Redbubble. And then another one was Inprint. And you can see what I mean by her artwork. It really has a, that commercial feel. Now, in terms of networking, um, Laura was actually quite fortunate that when she was a student with us um, many years ago, seven years ago, she applied for a grant. It was called uh, the Art Start Grant, which no longer exists, unfortunately. And she won $10,000, which uh, then she spent on a trip to Bologna in Italy. And she took herself off to the fair with business cards and samples of her work under her arm and she was able to really connect with a lot of publishers and authors and other illustrators and she made lots of strong connections while she was over there. Uh, she also goes on a regular basis to the London Book Fair and again she just wanders from store to store introducing herself um, and handing out her I guess business card and uh, a bit of a leaflet about herself you know so you've got to have the, uh, the confidence to be able to approach people and also the material to hand out in terms of uh, promoting your work uh, she now lives in Bristol in London um, this is a this is where she rents a space um, upstairs at Hamilton House and you can see that it's a shared environment. There's other creative people that work there. And this is her work area upstairs. Um, got a Mac, a drawing table. It's quite neat and tidy. There she is working at a desk. Um, so yeah, she's been, she's been there now for about four years, I think. And to date, here we go with achievements. She has published, I think, close to 32 children's books. Or she's illustrated, I should say, about 32 um, children's books. If you look back at her marketing plan, she was hoping that by now she would have 22 books published. So she's actually surpassed her goals, uh, her own goals. Uh, on top of doing children's book illustration, <clears throat> losing my voice here, she also uh, does editorial illustration when she can get it. Uh, so a bit of extra money. And um, here's her advice to you guys, to students. Her first bit of advice is don't wait until you graduate. Start acting like an artist now and start looking for commissions and possible clients. Now, that's easy for her to say because she was actually ready to operate even while she was a student. Um, my advice is that unless you are ready to be contacted by clients, by authors, publishers, art directors and the like, Maybe wait until you graduate. But if you're ready from now, by all means, you can get the word out. Uh, she does recommend having a shiny professional website uh, with only your best work on show. So that way, if people want to see your work, you can just direct them to your website. And there it is, nice and current and looking beautiful. Uh, contact businesses that you'd like to work with. Now, this is interesting. So if you were a potential... 
Animator, for instance, you're thinking maybe animation was your thing, <clears throat> you might want to contact Pixar and various animation companies in Australia and just you know get to know what, uh, what they're looking for and start um, putting your foot in the door, so to speak. Attend as many illustration events as possible. Well, under the current circumstances with this virus, that is impossible. But hopefully when it all passes, we'll be able to sort of um, promote various industry events to you. Uh, just make sure you've got some business cards handy. So if you meet someone interesting, you can always give them a card. Um, yeah, as far as making a living out of a profession, she's been quite fortunate that she's been able to strike a balance between her working life and her home life and that's the secret i think you know you don't want to become a slave to your work you want to be able to sort of have time to yourself uh for leisure and to spend with family and friends so that's basically uh the best advice from laura wood and that's the end of the presentation so i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you soon